Bruce Feldman with The Athletic dropped a, a, a banger, mm. a banger of an article, man. Um, and I want y'all to go over to The Athletic, check it out in full. I got about 10 or so notes that I pulled from it just for discussion, and, you know, just things that I thought were interesting. Um, he he uh, talked to, you know, different coaches, different, you know, scouts and things of that nature just to kind of get an inside view on what, what he thinks about some of these players. So I pulled about 10 notes from that. It's about 30 or 40 notes on the, um, on the actual, like, athletic article shout out to coach avis he actually sent it to me um so y'all go check that out and you know me and will still go back and forth on it or whatever so uh let's kind of let's get into this let's just talk about this article will still you can you can kind of put your face up on the screen for this because i kind of want your reaction i kind of want to go back and forth with you a little bit on uh some of these players um not all these players are like cowboy targets but uh this is a all 32 production so if you're a team that's looking you know for uh some of these players you can kind of um you know take something from this but i just thought it was some some banging information in this so let's just get going let's just cut this well still did you read it i didn't read the whole thing there's a lot in there um i took away i talked about uh some of it today or uh, yesterday on the show i didn't think the george pickens thing i thought it was <laughs> extremely interesting definitely touching on that and 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 the, the whole george we, we could fast forward to that the 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 george pickens thing is super interesting because, especially for cowboy fans because we coming off the back of this boss man fat thing right yeah so you know if 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 me and you having this conversation just a couple of days ago will still is sick of the problem player but we love george pickens and we talk about okay well if he's a problem player he falls maybe he's a second round guy boss man fat in my opinion was a first round talent in my personal opinion, but he ended up in the in the second for you know various reasons or whatnot, right? So, Will, just based on some of the things that you read, and I'm about to pull it up in a second. Like, what were your general, like, did your thoughts change when it came to, when it comes to problem players and George Pickens in the second round, possibly? No, it, it, he pretty much the same with, with the problem players. I need to know. I need to do homework. So sure. today I said, okay, this is what people are saying, but I need to dive in. So I got some of the fans in the chat to say, hey man, report back to me what you're hearing. Send me sure. to the right direction because every situation is not the same, right? Boss sure. man situation is not the same as George Pickens situation. Mm -hmm. um, so I got Professor O, who is big time, you know, Georgia fan, to kind of report back to me, give me some details on George Pickens. And from what it sounds like, it reminds me of Micah, bro, where people were harping on 19, 20 year old Micah Parsons, uh, 19, 20 year old George Pickens. But it sounds like this version of George Pickens has matured like you usually do when you're mm -hmm. a teenager going into adulthood. And there really isn't you know, that many issues in regards to character concerns. Um, sure. Kid loves football from everything I hear. Wants to be the best. Maybe he has a bit of an attitude about it. Maybe he's a bit mouthy. Maybe he has a bit of an edge to him. But Vox, that's the type of shit I like. I'm okay with that. What I'm not yeah. okay with is... Yeah, football is secondary. I I, I want to go. I want to win a Grammy. I mean, I'm trying to get on a feature with Drake. Yeah, you know, or or I want to do this music video. I want to go hang out. That's different than this yeah. situation. So I'm all I'm cool with George Pickens if it's just about him being mouthy and having an attitude problem. That ain't shit. All right, now Will said it might be too much talking. It might be too much content for you to be doing. <laughs> but just hold on, hold on. where's my problematic butt? God damn it. Stupid. That's an inside joke, y'all. That's an inside joke. One day in 10 years, we'll explain. <laughs> but he asked a scout about, uh, he says, uh, which wide receiver is the most boom or bust guy? And the scout says, George Pickens. There's a lot of upside, but he can't get out of his own way. He's been enabled his whole life. And I go, hmm enable so you know it, you know do you get a work hard guy you know is he is he is he coachable things of that nature just you know just like will says sometimes you just got to do your own and matt owen knows everything shots out of professor oh he's he a big time all, georgia guy man he knows all things um he asked a wide receiver coach uh who's the most boom or bust guy and once again he said pickens um you love his game there's some issues uh but do you want to work with him right he's a top six talent but it's impossible not to add those other things. He has a size, really good range. He positions himself on deep balls. He beats press coverage. And that sounds like a killer to me. You know that he, you know, he has a size and he has an Allen Iverson crossover. And the system kind of translates to the NFL, but I wouldn't touch him. I wouldn't touch him is wild. Wild. You know what I mean? That ain't like, oh, I wouldn't touch him till the second. That ain't like, oh, he might be a problem. I wouldn't touch him to the third. This, this is a this is an actual, you know, coach saying I would 
touch him. I think that's interesting. Um, now, like you know, like like we've been saying, the boss man and, and Pickens thing, they're 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 different yeah, things. Different. They're totally different things. But um, I would love for the league to panic over this. <laughs> I would love for for coaches and scouts to just be like, hey man, you know, I don't know don't about worry. this Pickens. Kid. Good, <laughs> good. <laughs> I'll take him off your hands, player. Don't worry about it. Don't you worry about it. Um, <clears throat> since we're on, let's talk quarterback for a second, right? We ain't looking at quarterback necessarily, but you know, anybody could be watching. Um, quarter uh quarterback coach number two says our highest graded quarterback this year is Sam Howell. And Sam Howell was my second quarterback on um on no, he's my third quarterback behind Corral and uh Willis at number one. He says, uh, I have a second round grade on him. We got a third round grade on Pickett. And if you look at Pickett's 2020 film, it'll be a six, seven round grade. That's kind of what I was saying. And I really have no clue where this new hype for George Pickett has come from. We'll still don't really understand it either. Um, but I watched his 2020, his his current film, his 2021 film. I'm like, okay, cool. I, I see what you're saying. But I've been, you know, we've been watching Pickett for a while. And you can say the same thing about Sam Howell, really. But when Sam Howell had, you know, like Deami Brown was on the team, uh, Javante Williams, Michael Carter at running back. Like when he had like talent, that North Carolina team was was something to look at. But those guys left. And then how, of course, took the Dak Prescott drop is what I call it. Uh, when you lose some 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 pros here and there, and you know, you know, you just kind of go bad, but you're still good enough to uplift your team. Kenny Pickett, to be fair, doesn't have many of those guys on on his team neither. But I thought that was interesting uh, that they, you know, <laughs> that they weren't rocking with it like that. He asked uh, two two coaches about Ikeem Okwonu, my number one um, lineman, and one coach was like, "He's a he's a generational guy, day one impact starter. Uh, he is by far the best lineman." Then he asked somebody else, and he said, "The coaches will love him, but the personnel people and the scouts might hate him because he's not me." What? <laughs> Excuse me, sir. I beg your pardon, sir. I look now, Will. I'm a little silly. I even went back to go look. I was like, oh, I can't miss a little knock knee. But he's knock knee smoking the shit out of people. He's knock knee working to second level whooping linebackers. He's knock knee getting to safeties and, and corners on screens. He's knock knee whooping Jermaine Johnson. Just, you know. Dom Monko, Monko. So I, 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 go ahead. Bozell Adams was deaf in one ear and he was a Pro Bowl tackle. So I'm cool with knock knee. Sure, yeah, yeah. We we don't have a problem with uh knock knee people. Um Kenny Pickett in the small hands. We ain't gotta to touch on Kenny Pickett in the small hands. We've already abused Kenny Pickett enough. Um so when he asked uh he asked a wide receiver coach who was uh, who was the best wide receiver in the in the in the class and let me just tap Will on the shoulder. He, he said Jameson Williams. So you know, <laughs> now Will still. I would love for you to there you go. <sighs> Do you think Jameson, you know, we we like to talk about who makes it to 24 or whatever, right? And like I said, this could be for all teams because if you're a, a team that will take him prior to Dallas, you can apply this too. You don't think he makes it to 24, huh? I've learned since C.D. Lamb to not put things in pen, right? But I don't think he'll make it to 24, no. Coach said, Jameson Williams, to me, it's not close. There's a big drop after him. Mm. He's blazing fast, and you can't replicate top end speed. And his play speed is different, like Tyreek Hill. Different. He's running away from SEC guys. His explosiveness after the catch is rare. We've been saying all that. His quickness at the line of scrimmage is just different. He's a hands catcher, not a body catcher. I think he's a good catcher, not a great catcher. Um, I, so now you got to ask yourself, man, like if he does fall, if he does fall, man. let's just, let's just let's just kind of just play this game. Will still Jameson Williams or Jordan Davis. Ah, God dang. Jeez. I, that's, I'm, I'm going to be real with you. They're going to be fighting in that war room. I, I, I don't have an answer, bro. Yeah, yeah. Jameson Williams, can you agree? Jameson Williams. Jameson Williams. Damn. I don't know. Jameson Williams is my number two receiver behind uh, Garrett Wilson. I don't hate anybody that has Jameson Williams as their number one guy. I'm just partial to route runners. And Jameson's a route runner too, but, you know, Garrett Wilson is, is also a uh, route runner. Does it, does it change your mind that it, the way wide receivers are getting paid, that you could get one in the first round and have them for five years? Does that change your mind? That kind of seems to be a topic coming up. Mm. Over a guy like Green Davis to me is rough because I I just think Davis is the type of guy that you could that you need the Cowboys 
need so, in the playoffs. They they've lost two playoff games now, giving up over four hundred yards rushing. So I don't think um I don't think we should be looking that far ahead. You know, I think um I think once fair. contracts come around, you know, you just kind of take care of that as they come to you. But I think your first priority is to get five good years out of a first round pick, regardless of who that player is. Now, if you get Kenyon Green and he turns out to be one of them dudes that that you can't let go, it doesn't matter. You know, at that point, you just sign that dude. Um, if Jamison Williams is the true game breaker, like if he really takes the offense over the edge, it doesn't matter how much he costs in the long run. You know what I mean? Like just, hey. Hey, I agree. We, we just got to pay him like like a number one guy, you know? They asked Steven Jones about fifth-year option. And he starts talking well, about using it with negotiations. So I just figured I'd bring it up, yeah. Well, you know, we have uh, we have tools to help us. Um, you know, we got the, we got the franchise tag. That's good to go. And, you know, we at the you know, end we, of the day, at, at the end of the day, you know, we have to look into the future. You know, we have to look into 2035 to see if all this will fit. Uh, <laughs> and if it fits, then then we'll we'll be happy to have Jameson. But we have to meet at both sides.